Welcome to Squadron Scale Workshop. My name is Brett Green and today it's a bit of a surprise package. Usually when I receive a sample from Tamiya in Japan, I get an email telling me what is coming and when to expect it. But yesterday afternoon, unheralded uh, and without any notice on the doorstep came Tamiya's forthcoming 135th scale KV-1 Soviet heavy tank. Now, this is a brand new tool kit. It has nothing in common with, I think, probably the 1970s vintage uh, Tamiya kit that was released uh, all those years ago. Uh, so we're in for a bit of a treat here. Now, I thought that I would uh, control myself. I would actually stop myself from, from uh, opening the box when I received it yesterday afternoon. So that uh, now what I plan to do is a bit of an unboxing video and I can share the joy of, uh, of actually having a look at the, the new sprues for the very first time with all of you as well. So the box top tells us that um, this is a model 1941 early production. There are quite a few different versions of the KV-1 that were produced from the beginning of the war to the middle of the war, uh, including um, applique armour on the turret, uh, a cast turret versus welded turret and so forth. So this is a, one of the early version welded turret uh, vehicles and it tells us on the front that it's an accurate rendering based on extensive research of actual vehicle um, and that it's an early production. Now, the Tank Museum at Bovington have what they label as a KV-1B, which I think is very similar to this, so they may have used the Bovington KV-1 as uh, reference. But without any further ado, let's take a look at what's actually in the box. Typical Tamiya top opening lid. And just working from top to bottom, we have, um, as usual, we have the, the single sprue in, uh, in a bag. This is sprue, uh, sprue E, and it would appear to be the, uh, the turret sprue. So we have the turret that's made up of uh, two separate sides, a rear, the bottom and the top, and over on the other side we have the, um, the mantlet, uh, the gun itself, the barrel, and uh, also quite a nice um, commander figure there as well, just a single figure. The other thing that struck me as I, as I had a quick look at that then before, is the, the really nice um, pitted and textured uh, rolled steel surface of the, uh, the turret sides. Really, really nice. This is not a cast texture, but the, uh, the process of uh, rolling and producing this armoured steel often left uh, pitting and a, an irregular type of a, of a finish on it. And that's really nicely done by Tamiya. Next sprue, once again, a single sprue in the bag. Uh, here it is, it's sprue B. So here we have, uh, we have track guards, we've got um, the, the cover for the, the engine compartment um, and uh, some generic parts here as well. So uh, that's a, a fairly general type of a sprue. The next bag contains two identical sprues. So we have, as you can probably even tell from this, uh, most of the running gear. And um, this is labeled uh, sprue A. The larger one is sprue A and that's sprue P. So we have the, uh, the road wheels. I think they're not the earliest style road wheels. I think they might be the second style that were used. We also have um, the drive sprockets, we have uh, the idler wheels, return rollers, uh, track guard supports, some stowage boxes, and uh, a few other odds and ends on there as well. Uh, also, by the look of it, the solid um, side mesh, which looks quite nice, even though it's solid plastic. Uh, we'll see how that looks painted up. I think it'll be pretty good. Next up is another bag with two sprues in it. 
and they are the tracks. I tell you a secret, I, I love these. To me, a Lincoln length tracks. <laughs> they look great when they're finished and they're, they're fast and easy to put together. And with big track links like these, it's going to be even easier. So we can see that we've got, let's see if I can, yeah, there we go. We can see we've got the, um, the natural sag uh, molded into that long single top run. We have a, a flat uh, bottom run and we can see there we've got a couple of uh, shorter runs and also a small number of single tracks. But those, the, these are going to be really fast to install. That's very nice. We've also got uh, separate swing arms on, uh, on these sprues as well. And the last of the coloured plastic sprues has a number of large parts in here as well. It's a big tank. When you, when you actually look at these parts, you realise how big this vehicle was. And uh, this is the uh, lower hull. So we have the, uh, the upper hull part with cutouts for the various engine and radiator covers. We've got the single piece lower hull, no motorization holes here this time, um, and also the uh, the sides with some nice uh, running gear detail in there as well. So not too much more to say about that apart from the fact that the details really crisp, the um, the bolt head details very very nice, that'll take to weathering like a duck to water, or like plastic to uh, an oil wash I would imagine. We have a few other parts in the box. Uh, a little bag with um, with a couple of uh, clear parts. So we have the the headlight, and um, our commander gets the luxury of a set of clear uh, um, visors as well. So that'll be quite nice for him. We also have the uh, the polythene caps. Got a set of large ones and small ones. If it'll ever focus, will it focus? It doesn't like me in the way. Anyway, take my word for it. They're there. And uh, the piece of string. So uh, that'll be uh, the tow cable as well. In addition to that, we have the standard uh, tech tips on um, how to cut parts out and spray parts and so forth. There's a folded sheet of background information. So we have that in various languages uh, and the marking guides for two vehicles are included there as well. Uh, not a lot of variety as far as the overall colors, but there's some, some nice marking options there. And then finally, we have oh, it's not quite finally, but there's the instructions. I hadn't looked at them yet, but I'm sure they're as straightforward as to me as instructions usually are. Excuse me a minute, I've just got to dig out the uh, the decals, and here they are. Not a particularly big decal sheet, but um, markings for the two vehicles, as discussed. So, there we have it. That is, to me, is brand new 135th scale KV-1 kit. It, it's not out yet, I don't think, but I don't think it's terribly far off. And this is a, a full production kit, so we're not going to see any changes between this and the kits that are on the hobby shop shelves in the coming weeks or possibly months, depending on what happens with distribution. But this looks like a real beauty. Um, I, at the moment, actually, I'll show you what I'm working on right now. What I'm working on right now is the uh, Tamiya 135th scale uh, R35, which is a gorgeous little kit. But I've got to say, when, when the KV-1 arrived, I was tempted, even at this late stage of, uh, of assembly and um, painting, 
to to sort of drop that and start on the KV one straight away. But I will finish this. Uh, it'll only take another couple of days. I'll put some photos up um, on Missing Links and uh, and on Facebook when it's done. Uh, and uh, make some comments on that one too. But the KV-1 is is another really nice kit from Tamiya and I'm looking forward to uh, building that one as soon as I've finished the Renault. Well, that's all we have for you today from Squadron Scale Workshop. Uh, and um, have a great time building and bye for now.